What are we supposed to do, like, vocally to warm up? Uh, oh, yeah. The uh, uh, red, red leather, yellow leather. Oh. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather. Leather, leather, leather. Yeah, see? God damn it. Let's do a go again. Yeah. Red uh, yeah. a- and now. red leather, yellow leather, 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 red yellow leather, red leather, red leather, red leather. AM podcast, and uh, I just got back from uh, a, the uh, straight out of quarantine. I got straight out of quarantine. <laughs> yeah, I just got back from COVID infection yeah. and being on lockdown. That yeah. was a blast. So uh, honestly, uh, it, it it was how bad did you have the uh, of the of the sickness? Mm. Because I, I, I it's hard to say because I'm vaccinated. So I don't know. Like I don't know how bad it. Well, like you weren't been. in the hospital. No, like, no. To no, be no, clear, I, like he's not. You know. I did not go to the hospital. I started to feel shitty, uh, like on a Friday night, Saturday morning type of deal, mm-hmm. where I was like, "Something's not right." It, it was a different kind. It wasn't like a just like a Ugh, I'm tired. Or yeah. A- well, it started with like I mean Fridays. I'm always tired because it's Friday. Oh we just God. put in a whole week of like training, and you know, I'm and I'm beaten and, and work and everything else, and I look forward to that Friday. You know, so usually, like, I can only make it till, you know, 9 or 10 o'clock on a Friday night before I'm, like, I'm done. done. Yeah. yeah, I like got to go like to bed. Falling yeah. asleep on the couch and shit, yeah. So nothing really too unusual there. And went to bed. I wasn't feeling great, but I was, like, I was okay. I mean, it's entirely possible that my, you know, my work week and jujitsu week had taken its toll on mm. me. And so I went to bed, and I had one of those where I woke up at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning or something. I'm like, uh-oh. Uh, uh-oh. Wait, like something's not right. Which end? Oh no, no, neither end. Oh, just like, one like of those where you're like uncomfortably, like yeah. you're sweating. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, like I'm sick. God. Like I something's. Hate that. I was like, oh, maybe I'll just sleep it off. It'll be okay. You know. You do that thing where you go to clear your throat and you hear that, <clears throat> and you're like, oh, my yeah, voice sounds thro- different. Yeah, and, and your throat's like, kind of sore, oh, and no. you're like, oh shit. Like, and sure enough, I woke up Saturday and I was like, fuck. Like I, I got up and I was okay. I wasn't great, but I was okay. And I was like, well, I started to move around. And I felt better, and I was like, well, could be getting a cold. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Hey. And so I went to uh, I went to urgent care because I had to get a COVID test because I've got all you knuckleheads to care for and my family to care for and we appreciate it. Thank you. So I went and got my. I spent all day, like all afternoon at the COVID or, or at the uh, convenient care because you know. Which is terrible, also because if you were <laughs> if you're COVID positive, you're just sitting there like, "Come on, what's going on yeah, here?" Yeah, well, they let you stay in your car, oh. so so I sat out in my car in the parking lot for hours because it was packed. And there's, you know, of course, your doctor's not open and all that stuff on the weekend. So, so I got my test, and then by Saturday night, I was like, "I'm feverish," and I'm like, "Fuck," oh, like, yeah. yeah, not good. And then so Saturday night into Sunday, like I was like it, I was in bad shape, like I wasn't getting out of bed, kind of stuff, you know. Man. Um, real feverish, achy, tired, you know, mostly lethargic by Sunday night, I was feeling better and I didn't get my test results back until Wednesday Mm -hmm. and I had COVID, but you know, by Monday I lost my sense of taste and smell and then it's back though. Okay. So wow, that's good. Yeah. That's that. I've heard. I've heard a lot of like people having really long lingering effects Any yeah. lingering effects so far that you've noticed. No, nothing. I, asked, I know I asked you today at, yeah. at the gym, like if you had any kind of like stamina issues or any not stamina issue. <laughs> no, no, that no. sounds like an erectile Dude, dysfunction. Okay. Do you have stamina issues? No, I'm I'm quite okay. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's okay. Hey guys, he can go all five minutes. No, all five minutes. Yeah. I got, um, my wife got it though too. So that's yeah. two breakthrough cases. And as you know, as it t- turned out the whole, and it's hard to say, we, nobody knows where we got it from. My littlest one did have it, but it was a couple weeks ago and she was, um, asymptomatic. Mm-hmm. So, and that was because of a cheer competition and her friend got it. And then, you know, yeah. she was unvaccinated. And she was actually scheduled to get a vaccine, and then she got COVID. So, so now no need. And then, so yeah, so we, you know, we played it safe and quarantined and all that other stuff, and kept ever you know kept her home. And 
And then my wife and I got it. Yeah. She's doing better now. She's yeah. on mend. So everybody's fine. I mean, it was like, did I have stamina issues? Yeah, for the week, like I like the whole week that I had to quarantine, I was tired all the time. Yeah. I was up and moving. I didn't miss a day of work. You know, yeah, like yeah. everything was good. Luckily, but, yeah, the the good thing about working from home is the fact that you can you can still do I just, That's what I was going to say about you being stuck in the, in the car the whole time at Urgent Care. Were you able to do any work from your car or anything like that? It was on Saturday. Oh, nice. So, so, you're, so yeah. you're just wasting your so day off. So I just wasted awesome. my weekend. Yeah, nice. my day off. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And it was beautiful. And I was like, man, I want to skate. And but then like... you got a whole bunch of fucking days off in a row. <laughs> oh, yeah. And what a joy. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, uh, I'm glad to... I mean, it's awesome that you're better. It's awesome that... Sure. It's, it's a low impact. Like, it... <sighs> Two and a half years, man. We yeah. dodged that bullet. And then, yeah, you know that's what I'm noticing. It, yeah, so. uh, me and uh, me and Pat were talking about it earlier today about like how uh, how so many people. It, he he's thinking it's it's get it's worse now than it was. I think it is, and it's like just because of like the fact that everybody now we're we're seeing more people that we know getting it. Yeah, and it's like well, yeah, it's probably worse in general, but it's also like, I mean, how how. What's what's the likelihood of somebody never ever getting COVID at all? I think it's probably very low. Right, and that's that my wife and I talked about that too. I think that the the reality, and this is why people are burnt out on this shit now. Yeah, because the reality is, is you can do you can take certain steps to mitigate your risk towards right. getting COVID or having severe symptoms, things like the vaccine, um, you know, vitamins, cor- vitamins yeah. quarantining yourself, wearing a mask, blah, 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 on and on and on. But the reality is, is that I find that it's it's got to be pretty, it's like saying I've never had a cold. Yeah. No, you're going to get it's it. It's going to happen. Yeah. yeah it's going to happen and it's going to fucking, it's going to suck. It's, it's gonna not going to be awesome. I'm uh, glad to have you back. Well, I, thanks, honestly, man. Yeah. I, I, took a t- I took some time off too because I think I, I happened to roll with you that Friday. Sure. I think I'm pretty sure I rolled with you, and I think Muskin was the same way. He had a, a I contact. I met a meeting yeah. with him. I contacted everybody, you know, and let them know, and right. contacted the school and let them know, and you know. So I mean, I did my due diligence in terms of like making sure everybody knew that I had potentially had COVID. I would let them know when I got my test results back. But like, yeah. you know, this is and obviously the, the podcast took a took yeah a week took, off. A, took a week off. Nothing, nothing. Ha- nobody got it that I am aware of from me. Like no. it didn't. So it didn't. I like, didn't even spread. have symptoms. I was just like I just used it as an excuse to sleep in for a week. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna, like, you know, oh, I don't know, you know, because uh, maybe, maybe is this turkey chili. What is this? I don't know what this is. I'm eating. Oh, it's oatmeal. Uh Oh, there's a problem. That, that's not good. But hey, speaking of which, shout out to Justin who, and Chris. Of course, Chris took over for Monday class and then Justin ran the rest of the week. And yeah. uh, I got great feedback that he did a terrific job. Excellent and, uh, guest instructors. Yeah, yeah. So I was really, really and everybody that that reached out to see how I was doing. I really appreciate it. So yeah, yeah. all's well. Hell yeah. It's good yeah. to have you back. And now we're back, and we had a week of training this week. We are a week away from Christmas. Yeah. And this will be our holiday special. You're out of town next week. I am. So we won't be recording next week. Right. And uh, They're so, used to it by now. <laughs> I know. It's fine. So we've got the uh, – we've got this is our holiday special, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited because uh, it, it's, a, it's a time of giving. It's a time of joy. It's a time of flavored ginger ales and, and different things that we can enjoy. Uh, what's what? Just real quick, what's your favorite? Did holiday you just drink? rhyme that? Did I? <laughs> I'll have to go back in the tape and probably see I if think I rhymed. Did it. If I did, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, phonetically it rhymed. So um, I mean, yeah. but but yeah, I I. Uh, what's your favorite like holiday? Uh, Treat. Treat. Like, yeah. my favorite holiday treat is my mom's Christmas cookies. Okay. Is, is, are they sugar cookies? Are, what, she makes a, a variety of them, like peanut butter cookies, sugar cookies, icebox cookies. It's a it's a type of cookie. And, yeah. Uh, she's got, like, there are there are a variety of them. And it depends on what I can, like, coerce her into making for the year. Okay, yeah. And uh, and she makes, like, but she just makes, and Toll House cookies, so they're, they're amazing. And um, so she just makes these, and, like, she makes piles of them. And this year, of course, I won't get to eat any of them until Christmas Eve. Right. We visit with we visit with my mom on Christmas Eve, and uh, so I'm a little bit disappointed in that yeah. respect. But yeah. I, but do you get sent home with like a little? I do. I will. Okay. I'll get a, like a to go bag, and it's gone usually by then. It's like it's. It, I eat them. Yes. You, you realize like that the bag of cookies or the the leftover cookies you get sent home with for Christmas are gone way faster than any kid's Halloween candy. Oh, for sure. You know what had, I mean, we had Halloween candy for like weeks yeah. and weeks you're giving Hall- you're putting halloween candy in your christmas cookies like yeah I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm giving that shit away for christmas uh, <laughs> i like the uh it's probably a tie for me i like the my uh, same thing with my mom i found out that a lot of mom's uh, recipes whether it be uh savory or sweet yeah. are oftentimes the recipe from the box oh is but it they just put mom twist on it somehow. yeah you know yeah. what i mean they're like they're like the toll house one where you're like 
Yeah, I just buy a package of Toll House things, but it's like, she yeah, but you it. do something to it. No, no, that one, my, that one's a family recipe that my mom makes. Oh, so, oh, oh yeah. she makes her yeah. like. From now scratch. that's not to say that it couldn't have been like from a Toll House like. Yeah. Package at some point in the, the last like eight years. Works. But... I bet it was, and and, and that's no dis. Like all of our moms do it. Like I asked for my mom's uh, s- spinach dip recipe. Yeah. So I'm like, your spinach dip is awesome, and she's like, oh yeah, it's on it's on Triscuit Box or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so, <laughs> and oh. yeah, and yeah, it's the same. Oh, Except- and Santa Claus isn't real, by the way. Motherfucker. Well, who am I been sending my list to for fucking 35 years? No, he's real. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> there's a, uh, uh, it's a tie between the chocolate orange that you smash on the table and it like breaks apart. Have you seen one of those? I've not. It's a, I, I like a, it's especially a dark chocolate orange. Yeah. And it's a seasonal uh, holiday treat. That is it. It's shaped like a uh, orange peel, like without or not peeled, but uh, just whole with the rind and everything. Yeah, and completely made of dark chocolate, but orange infused inside. And you smash it on the table, and it breaks apart into little slices, little orange slices. Yeah, and you eat it like that. And it's like probably, I think it's like four thousand calories for a whole one. <laughs> <or something. laughs> you can't. I, I I challenge anyone to eat an entire one in one sitting. It's impossible. That's insane. But it's delicious and. By the like, if you eat two in the holiday season, you are good for a whole year until yeah. another one. And also, uh, honorable mention, the little peanut butter cookies with the Hershey Kiss smashed in the middle. Oh, you like those ones oh, too? Oh my god! And I, of course, who could forget Uncle Tom's Christmas pickle? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Uncle Tom's. Pr- you know, yeah, I've heard he's, of. He's given that to you every year, I think, hasn't he? I I, I don't. Uh, I've kind of blocked a lot of those memories out. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> this but, is wrong. It's the holiday season. It's wrong. <laughs> We're here for the holiday episode. Yeah, yeah. We got our favorite treats. We got some jujitsu news. We got some uh, yeah. Ask a Black Belts turntables. Yeah, we're we're ready to rock for this episode. It's, so it's the holiday. Trees there. Special. Jeff, what are we talking about today? We are talking about the 10-year plan, man. Because, of course, wrapped into the, the Christmas holiday is, of course, the New Year's. Yes. We've got New Year's resolutions. Oh, man. And which with that comes the, uh, the uh, I think, the... Um, we'll call it the first timers crew, like the New okay. Year's resolution crew. I got gotcha. people that are going to try jujitsu for the first time. Right, right. Some people got like gifted. They'll get gifted, like you know, um, you know, a month's whatever membership yeah. or whatever. I've always wanted run. to try it. You know, this year I figured I would try it. Or, or yeah. you know, my buddy told me it's a great way, or blah blah blah, or something like that. Sure. And and I think that's the same way with I think every gym, not just jujitsu gyms, mainly. At every gym but yeah but we see it i i would say jujitsu is of all the martial arts is probably the high i would see that we'll see, see we'll see, see we'll definitely see a good like increase of people that are coming in for the first time as you know it's not like it's um it's not like it's crunch fitness or yeah. you know or planet fitness or something like that those people they get that's how they make their living they do it off of new year's resolution people that go in for ten dollars a month yeah they they'll go in maybe one time maybe that's like their black friday exactly yeah. and then <laughs> never go back again but they right. keep that 10 dollar membership because it's 10 bucks who cares you want right? to add a tanning package sure you know, i got the sticker in the back of my car yeah you know they, well fitness. and then you're not going to go probably a whole month of january because right. you know it's pretty cold out i mean it's cold as january february is coming up hey Valentine's Day is right around the corner. You want to try to tighten things up right last minute? That's right. I've you got hurt gift yourself. ideas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take February off, and then then, yeah. you're, then you're building terrible routines. And then routines. when spring gets there, you're going to be outside, so yeah. you're not going to want to go to the gym. Exactly. So. so what's the success, in your opinion, of a 10-year plan? Okay, so the 10-year plans we were talking about today is like, because if you're, if you're a jiu-jitsu practitioner, okay, and you're, you've, been in the, you've been in the game, we were, uh, I was talking about this uh, with, a, with a friend of mine this morning who's also a student of jiu-jitsu. To and and uh, you know we we kind of share a uh, a mindset that that mixes between like how the like the business world or the way that we operate from a from a professional standpoint sort of mingles in with like how we also approach jujitsu or whatever. Right. The ten year plan is simple. The ten year plan says this. It says that like first of all, it's on average it's like ten years is like your level of mastery for anything, for any skill that you want to acquire. Right. Mastery can be had within those 10 years right. if you dedicate a certain amount of time, effort, and energy to it. And jiu-jitsu is no different. They say the average is about 10 years if you're a casual practitioner to, to get your black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And so they're, they're probably figuring or averaging on two, three, maybe four times a week that you're training and that you're staying pretty consistent throughout that time. In that 10 years, 
you are likely to get or be eligible for your black belt. Right. Okay. And so, you know, really when we think about it, when we think about the 10 year plan, and I think about this from a business perspective too, but, but jujitsu in particular is that like, look, if I, if you start today and you're, um, you're 30 years old Mm -hmm. and I say, by the time you're 40, you know, you're going to have, you're, you're going to have this wealth of knowledge and experience and you'll have your black belt and, you know, if I if I if I say you're going to stick to this plan and I can guarantee you that success in that time period, would you say no? Thank you. Would you say no? I I don't want to do that. No, you're going to say yes. Of course, I'll do that. The same way that if I said if you are at zero now, like with your professional career and or you want to learn a new skill, and I tell you that in that ten years, you will be, you know, a professional, mm-hmm. making the money you want to make, having all the things that you wanted from your life, would you say no to that? Right. And nobody ever says no. No. They of say yeah. Not. Yeah. The problem is, is that we usually set our goals in a much like shorter time frame, six months, a year, two years, every year, New Year's resolution this year. Yearly. Yeah. This year, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And I'm going to change myself in a year. Like, right. No, you're not. No, probably not. No, you're definitely not. Right. Because you're going to spend at least three of those months struggling with changing it in the first place or getting started. Right. If there's a dramatic change in in one year's time, it's probably bad news. Yeah. It's probably, <laughs> right. it's probably something you had no control over. your control. Over. Yeah, right, exactly. Right, right. Yeah. It's like you got into a car accident. You got some kind of terrible uh, illness or something like that. You don't want that. If you want true success have a uh, a goal for the year right right you know that's kind of like one of those things of like it, it's definitely it's the 10 year plan is something that I have been very interested in for the it's, past like yeah. six years <laughs> <laughs> so I'm yeah. almost there yeah good you're almost there and that's and it's true because that's the thing is is that is that you you know really 10 years oh, isn't man. that long I know Canada drive I fucking love it dude I, I if we could get any sponsor for I'm so sorry to interrupt no but go this, ahead I just had that first sip mm. Mm. Canada dry Blackberry flavored ginger ale. It's uh, yeah. Now tied for third as my favorite holiday <laughs> treat. <laughs> that now one's free. Tied for third. All right. So anyway, ten year plan. Yeah. So you've so you've got and and the question becomes then with jujitsu is like you know you, and it's okay to have like you you're gonna have milestones and objectives to reach in between that time, but what you'll notice is that that success in a particular area tends to. Um, it tends to build on itself. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I say, okay, you're going to suffer for 10 years and then you'll make it. No, there's progress in throughout that entire. Yes. I think that's the misconception in a lot of things. Right. It's like, you're going to go, you have like, you don't, you're not going to see, you only see zero and 10. Right. You don't see anything in, in between. Like right. when you're a six, like that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. Six it's, is it's, pretty cool. Cause pretty you're on the downslope. It's things are getting not necessarily easier, but they're easier for you to navigate and stuff like that. Sure, because if we're talking about jujitsu, the nice part about that is that there is there are measurements, and it's your belts. Yeah, you know, you've got your white and your blue, your purple, brown, and then black. So at six years, you're probably somewhere in your purple belt range, and and or getting close to your brown belt, and uh, you know, that's I think you're pretty you're a pretty freaking dangerous person. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. purple belt, you know, have a lot of skill, and you're probably in it to win it at that point. You say it all the time, even for like blue belts. You're just like blue belts are dangerous people. Well, they are against yeah. like an un- like on un- out into sure. to normies and stuff like sure. that. I th- I have a lot of white belts that are dangerous people to normies. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to you people. Yeah, but yeah, I mean that's so like you know the question becomes you know like what how are you how are you putting that plan together and what are you trying to do and so we will talk a little bit about that today. So do you do you New Year's resolution it? I I have so I, a f- funny story with this is like I I'm, I am very goal oriented a lot of times like I like thirty day challenges or like this challenge and stuff like that but I always do it in, with the intention of building a good habit because once somebody told me like all you have to do is do something for like two weeks and you're and you're basically in the habit of you you built that habit okay if you focus on it for two weeks at least then it kind of just becomes a habit right. So it's that I've learned that even with bad things, like I said about the, I was talking to you earlier about having the treats every single night. It's like, blah, 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 let's pump the brakes. Let's just have some ice water tonight. Sure. Ice you know? water. <laughs> let's just <laughs> cut it. Let's cut it. <laughs> I kind of like discipline. I, I appreciate it. So sure. when there's structure or frames or anything like that, I, yeah. I feel like there's, that's easier for me to understand because I can see it better. It's hard for me to see the big picture a lot of times. So a 10 year plan is easy because the failures are so much easier to accept because yeah. it's it's losing a battle, not the war. Correct, right. So yeah, it's it, a good way to look at it. And and it's all about with me like a, a lot of times like mindset. 
So sure. a ten year plan, it just gives you again, it gives you a finish line. It gives you, um, like I I like to reassess every year. Sure, I you got you be, have time to readjust and look yeah. at what's working, what's not working. Because yeah. I don't want to do that. I would do that thing where I'm like, this year I'm going to eat healthy, and then if I didn't do it on the second. Yeah. I felt like a failure. And it's like one of those things of like, man, I already fucked up my New Year's resolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you can't look at it like that. That's the the it's New Year's resolution on the surface, it's a good idea. But it's also like it's you I kind of started doing that all all the time. Sure. I would always have a resolution. That became exhausting until I discovered something like a ten year plan where it's sure. like give yourself some space. What do you want to do at the where do you want to be at the end of this ten years? Sure, right. And I'm already seeing it at the six year mark and that's the exciting part and that's also it's also very deceiving because <laughs> it also makes or, you feel like oh i did it in six years and you're sure. like no 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 just give it to 10 years and find out where you're at yeah, in 10 years yeah because that goes back to your discipline mark you have to like see it through don't stop working yeah, don't at don't it stop, right. and even at 10 years you're not going to stop working at it but you're going to be able to say hey look at how far i came right and you're going to have a new 10 year plan at the end of that Right. You, you'll add other things into it, too. You'll have other ones that have kind of forked off into other, like... Sure, you, yeah. You yeah. may even notice, okay, well, wow, look at that. I'm at my 10-year mark for this, but I'm working on this shit, so... Okay, cool. Yeah. And then you're on to... It's 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 crazy how different you're, you are as a person even after 10 years. Sure. If you're doing the right work, I feel like. Well, I think you put it like you, you said the, the right thing earlier, and that is that the, the, the one of the biggest problems with having any type of resolution or plan that's that's you know, that's set up for failure is number one, managing expectations. Yeah. So unrealistic goals and plans and things of that nature are, are just systems of repeated failure. And you know, full well that how unrealistic, if your goal is unrealistic, I'm going to get my, I'm going to get my black belt in two years or whatever, yeah. or, you know, something like that. You know. If you, if you've had no training whatsoever, going from zero to six, it's very unlikely. Yeah. I mean, and if it's you did, very unlikely, and if you got it, like, <laughs> is it, are you a good black belt? Right. <laughs> Probably right. not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, like, you know, there's, there's ways that we're always looking for as human beings, we're always looking for these like shortcuts. Like how do, how do I, how do I mitigate this like misery and like make this, how do I make money quicker? How do I, you know, how do I, do this quicker a singing faster. star it's like a reality show so right and all that stuff right you know? yeah right and the truth is is that like there there isn't a shortcut if there was we'd all fucking do it right and it wouldn't be as special it would if everybody could do it it wouldn't be as special like it wouldn't sure. be it wouldn't be something that you would want to obtain it's just not right yeah. there's no interest in it right there's no challenge in the in the in the old, the end goal so i mean so starting off with the idea is like if you look at a 10 year plan, you build in enough room for you to set realistic goals. So getting your black belt, for instance, in jujitsu in that amount of time is realistic. You, if you stick with it and train and and follow the you know, follow the curriculum of your academy and stay healthy and so forth and take care of yourself, you have a very good chance of obtaining that goal. It's realistic. You can check in and adjust as you go. Like if of you're course. if you get to th- three years or four years and you're still at blue belt or something like that and you're like oh shit i was supposed to be here by now like you can you can just speed you you're at you have the luxury of being able to adjust and add a little bit more onto your plate and not overwhelm yourself sure yeah i mean it took me longer than 10 years to get my black belt right so i mean i'm just saying though as an average like you can you can make it and honestly at that point even if you're at the 10 year mark and you're at a brown belt Mm -hmm. you're not going to quit right yeah 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 (laughs) it's unlikely that you're going to quit it's very unlikely you would i i I would like to see that i the the uh, the percentage of of white belts that quit obviously we're talking about new year's resolutions and people that either do it for a couple months think it's i think a lot of people try to convince themselves it's for them uh sure we talked about this in the last episode yeah right yeah you want to you want it to you want it to be something like don't force it like it's not try it i definitely think everybody should try it it can be for everyone it can be right but it's also it's also like the amount of white belts that quit compared to the amount of brown belt said quit not like sure. have to quit because of injury but say ah i'm done <laughs> who's right. gonna say ah, i'm a brown belt i've had enough of this. <laughs> i don't think that happens it doesn't happen often i'm sure it does happen but it doesn't happen often i would like, like to shame that person though of course <laughs> if they're not injured if they're if it's not because yeah. of, uh, yeah. of of injury or or self-care in some way if they just decided to quit yeah i would like to i would like to shame them and it, at least to goat them into a fight 
to hopefully make them want to compete more <laughs> and go back to like jujitsu, <laughs> right? <laughs> Bring them back home. Come on, yeah. guys, you can do it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, so the, you know, so setting like your setting your ten year plan in in jujitsu should look something like that, you know. And if you're somewhere in the middle of that range, so if you're like at your purple belt at this point, mm-hmm. your ten year plan just extends a little bit further out past your black belt like what is it that you know what goals are you, you're going to be changing your idea of like where you want to be at that end of that 10 years and that's contingent upon your age and you know where you think you're going to be in life what you're able to to accomplish and that's that's one of the other things again going back to like setting realistic goals like deciding like if you you know are you going to be this at 40 are you going to be this world beater you know, right. as you just started jujitsu, so you'll be because nobody cares until you're a black belt anyway. Yeah, and so you're going to be in your fifties. You know, I'm not saying you can't be a champion. I'm just saying, are you going to be another thing? Yeah, we just talked about with, right, exactly. Like Sixty year old, certainly not maybe. saying that. I'm just saying, are you going to be that person who's you know the world beater? You know, at the top of the game. No, you won't be because you're fifty. Right. It's just not going to happen. Right. So, like, you have to be realistic about it. So you just try and set, like, realistic goals for in terms of, like, what the best that you can be. You're reaching your own potential for jujitsu and getting something out of that and then giving, trying to give back yeah. what you can. I, and that's the thing is I, I don't think people realize, like, the the 10-year plan isn't, like, a plan. You, it's really you, not. You have to make up your 10-year plan. You have right. to. It's not, right. it's not a, a system that you can just. Uh, it's just that's, like, that's it. Ten in ten years, make make a goal. This is what I want to. Yeah, this right. is what I want to accomplish in that time period. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's very simple. It's not like a. There's no there's no real rules to it except for the fact of things like we're talking sure. about. Sure. It's just op- giving yourself opportunity, and and yeah, a to bit succeed. Of, right. To opportunity succeed. to succeed instead of fail. Right? right. So I mean, the the short term ones are all opportunities to fuck it up and hate yourself for it. Right. And then be like, ah. Uh, now I'm going to spend all my time justifying why I didn't accomplish this goal versus or feeling bad about myself that I didn't accomplish it versus being like, Meh. like we hit a road bump or a hiccup and this right. shit happened. So, like, you know, how am I going to keep? Yeah, I, I think I lost a year in my of my 10 year plan to COVID. <laughs> you know I, I, mean? I think a lot of people did. So, yeah. like, that's the thing of like, it, but it's exactly everybody did. Right. So, you know what I mean? So it, 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 a lot of things changed in that time as well. A lot of the way things work and the way the way people work now sure. yeah. are different. So, or if they're working or you know whatever, like how companies are, or any it, 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 it's it, everything has shifted. So in that ten year, like being smack dab in the middle of it, it's sure. it's nerve wracking because it's also like, do I need to pivot? Do I need to adjust this at all? And but knowing that I have this time to work knows that it, it gives me the comfort of 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 knowing oh it doesn't matter like it, right <laughs> i'm just gonna observe for a little bit and, and i think that kind of i think that you know that's the way i i, I roll usually that's the way I, i'm i'm usually one of those guys like what are you doing yeah what's going on with this guy sure you know and, and it's a fault in jujitsu, <laughs> but as far as like life, I feel like it can be it can be really helpful. Yeah, but it's not a fault. I mean, if you think about it like this, like you're you have to. There's a lot of things that you're assessing that's outside. Like when you're doing when you're doing a combat sport, you're assessing a lot of things that aren't directly related to a technique or a move in that um, in that sport. Because, for instance, like one of the primary goals that you have while you're competing in a combat art is making sure that you stay healthy and safe. Yeah. And continue or able to continue to train. Right. That's always on everybody's mind all the time. I know because I've been doing this for a long time. And like you're like you have that move, but you just tweaked your knee. And that's yeah, that's why you do that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and you think to yourself, <laughs> yeah, can I can I actually yeah. do this thing right now? And you want to, but is it worth the risk? Right. And so here's where here's where like we sort of put the like the pieces together and like because as you'd mentioned, there's not a specific plan. It, because that's not how it works. It's individualistic. Like, but you should put it on that path that's like ten years. And the way that I look at jujitsu, and again, this was something that I was talking about uh, with this friend of mine this morning, is that you know my jujitsu is low risk, high reward. Okay, because that is jujitsu. When you think about it like this, there's only one high reward in jujitsu, and that's the submission. Yeah, that's defeating your opponent definitively. A finish. Yeah. Right. They're saying no I points. quit. Yeah. No points. You have made that man or woman 
submit. That's right. And they they say, I'm done. You win. I quit. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so therefore like it doesn't, it, regardless of whether I'm going low risk or high risk, there's only one reward and that is I win. Right. So if you had to choose between the two, you would choose low risk. Yes. Because that makes sure that I'm mitigating any like type of injury to myself or the, the idea I won't that, lose. <laughs> or that I'll lose. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Or like, so for the same reward, that's not the case with other sports. For right. instance, in skateboarding, like it's high risk, high reward. If you yeah. go low risk, you never get high reward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're. you're yeah, I, I, I was always very low risk with skateboarding, and I, yeah. and I still actually was like very low reward. You're right, right. Like, very I'm, high injury. Though. I'm now high risk, <laughs> low reward. And so, I mean, there you go. <laughs> so, but but jujitsu is not like that. It's it's very it's low risk, high reward. That's what you want to aim for. So you have to be able to take those times during those rolls, right. for instance, to to stop and think about this like should i do this thing and if it's like if it's nagging you you know then don't do it yeah okay but i'm not saying i'm not saying don't experiment but experiment in context to like what makes the most sense where if if i'm working my mindset into that into that play then there are lots of opportunities for me to experiment without risking yeah you know defeat yeah, yeah, defeat, or, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right, or getting hurt, right. Yeah, and, and that and that's ultimately what I uh, my my goal is, like you said, like is just to say, like I want to continue yeah. to roll. Like I'd like to just like pop up. I don't want to. There's so many times where people at the end of a roll, like, and this is not like a. I don't mean this as like a a judgment, but it's like people that are like. <sighs> at the end of it, like I don't want to be like that. At the end of it, no, I want to work, and, yeah. and I and I and I want to be. I want to work a sweat. I want to get my. The blood yeah, you want to work hard and yeah. get my muscles going and everything like that. But like, I'm not. I don't want to be gassed at the end. Of, I'm not going to empty my tank here. You don't want to. I don't want to empty my. I want to be able to manage my to be able to still make you breathe like that. Sure, sure. You, <laughs> and, and, me, and like that's that's my goal. That's right. a win in my case. Like you remember me telling you when I was like doing roller hockey, I I said I was the goalie, and I and it doesn't matter how many fucking goals I let in, and it doesn't matter how bad I lost because I lost a lot. I was like maybe one in five <laughs> maybe <laughs> and like and, and i only played half a game <laughs> so uh, uh but like if i was able to 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 glove a, a shot yeah if i could catch a shot like watch them come in get into position and 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 fucking snatch a goal out of the fucking like you know what i mean yeah. like that's that's the thing that's a success to me and sure it's not always yeah. just the oh i got the, the the success of that like it's i've created my own plan well that's just it that there's case, yeah. others there's other victories in that right right so right. like geo dominating hitting that sweep that you're working on yeah. you know getting that to that position you're working on that pass whatever like there are victories within that that lead you to the ultimate like i'm able to reach that that pinnacle of success which is the submission more frequently right than when I started. Right, right. That's the idea. Yeah. There's always the goal. Like, that goal never changes. So, it, from white to black belt, that that high reward is still the submission. Yeah. It doesn't change. Yeah, yeah. That's the highest of rewards. It is. I love it. It's the idea. And as you were talking about, like, with your with your stamina and so forth and, and like, not running out of gas is, like, yeah, because, honestly, you, you're going to go to comp – and you still want to gas in the tank because the time you're going to get jumped is when you're walking back to your car after comp. <laughs> <laughs> well, you fucking pussy, you lit slate there, you yeah. pussy. <laughs> and you're going to want something left you in the tank. stuck your arm out there. <laughs> <laughs> you did that for, with 10 seconds left. It's not my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to want some uh, some fuel in the tank there yeah, on the yeah. way back to your car. Yeah, so. at least to carry your gi bag and, yeah. or to pick your teeth back up if yeah, you need to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and get them to the... And that's the, smart thinking, fence. Jeff. That is... That's one to grow on. That's one to grow on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so if you've got like a if you got some ideas about what you want to do here with your with your jujitsu this year, make it about uh, your ten year plan. Yeah, make it about like setting these like setting these milestones as goals and go low risk, high reward. Think about it in the long term because that's where you want to be. You know, it's going to take that amount of time anyway, which is a long time. It's going to take that amount of time for you to, to master this skill. To get so, there. Yeah. So position don't, before submission. That's right. Guys. So don't blow it by right. like trying to like force your way through it faster or cutting corners because that's where you get hurt. And that's when you're off the mat. Like if it's a catastrophic injury, you could be off for six months or a year or more. Right. Don't. Yeah. Just take just your time. Like, you're just going to hate that. You will. You're, you're going to you're going to hate it. You're going to hate it. and You're probably not going to come back. Yeah. You might just quit. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right? Nobody seems, wants that. Nobody, nobody wants. wants I don't. I'll tell you, Jeff. There's not one single person that I want to quit jujitsu. I've met plenty of people that I was like, just quit. But there's not a lot of people that I think should. No, it's true. And I'm that, spoiled. I guess, I guess there's a lot of people I think should, but not necessarily people that you know I yeah. want to. No, I'm spoiled now because I've got such a good crew that like there's just nobody that I could think of that I'd want them to quit. Like yeah. it just doesn't happen. Yeah. But um, but yeah, if you could though, just name like three that you would like. Just hypothetically, <laughs> uh, hypothetically, two of them are named Pat. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think that pretty much does it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much most of the list. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, so you know, with our uh, with that said, we've got like our we've got jujitsu holiday gift guide. Yeah, oh, yeah. What do you get for the for the jujitsu practitioner in your life? I think I sent my wife a uh, matching bottom and top teenage mutant ninja turtle themed rash guards. That's what you said you wanted for. for I hinted Christmas? it. You hinted at it. I, I I hinted it by sending her a link and saying this is what I want. <laughs> also, a reusable coffee cup. That's a thing that. The amount of fucking times I've spilt coffee on my fucking ghee. Yeah, see, there you I'm go. I'm fucking tired of it. Yeah, yeah. A reusable coffee cup, obviously. A travel mug. Spill thing. proof. Spill, spill proof. Yeah. If you have any recommendations, I, I was going to go Yeti, right? So mm-hmm. I see I see Chris with the Yeti one, but it's that that one's too small. I, I like a 20-ounce one because, as yep. you know, as a fellow uh, frequent pisser, yeah. Uh, but I drink a lot of fucking coffee. Yeah. So I want I want the twenty ouncer. I want it to be able to seal to ho- keep in that heat for hours and fucking hours, yeah. and not to spill all over my goddamn hand. I didn't think it would be so hard to find, Jeff. <laughs> but if you're asking personally, yeah, what do you get? I think uh, at least people that train early in the morning, because it like, yeah, I like blood stains are cool. Coffee stains look like shit. Yeah, it looks literally. Like, yeah, it looks like you shit yourself. They look like doo doo. Yeah, and so, I don't do do in mine. I I clean everything out. You've got the that's right. I mean, if you got like, I think coffee mugs are really like or or beverage receptacle. Yeah, actually, Spill-proof really yeah. beverage receptacle. Hot, oh. <laughs> yeah. huh? What'd you say? Jeff? Huh? I can't hear you. <laughs> no, uh, any re- hot or cold reusable cup. I yeah. feel like is yeah. Is a I think smart it's a gift quality. Idea. It's a quality gift idea for your your jujitsu practitioner yeah. and your family. Whether it be water or yeah. coffee. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You want I it? I mean, you can always go with the ghee. Okay. Ghee, yeah. Obviously. There's lots of great options of ghees available. Personal for... favorite uh, uh, brand. Like if you're if somebody were to buy Jeff a, a ghee. If you bought me a ghee. If you're like, <sighs> oh man, well, I, the best one I ever owned was this company. Company. It was so comfortable. Like as far as like, cause, cause it's weird. There's you know that elite. You know elite. Yeah. I I, I love elite's gi pants, but right. the gi jacket or the the uh, yeah yeah the jacket the, the, the jacket right. I got yeah uh the well it's. I guess it's the it's lapel. Not, it's like not, the, the, it's the, not elite. <laughs> yeah, it goes to the knees. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, ridiculous. Right. I don't understand. Like it looked like. I don't know who this was made for because the pants pit fit perfectly. Yeah, and the jacket went almost to my ankles. Yeah, I so, get it. Yeah, but so, the pants work perfect. Fit is such a big deal because yeah. like the, so geese all they all change based on brand like where like where they fit. So you know, are you an A two long? Are you an A three? Are you uh yeah. you know like all those things change based on like what what gi brand you go with. You, look, the one that I, I'll tell you this: the ones that I find that are the most consistent over time and are durable and good quality geese are Fuji geese. Oh, okay. They've just all, they've been a staple of jujitsu and judo for years and years and years. They're they're you can get more expensive Fuji geese, but you can just get their base, you yeah. know, everyday training gi, and it's like eighty nine bucks. I was or gonna say, yeah, the the general cost I think of like yeah. of a good one, like the elite one I got, I think was like sure. sixty to eighty bucks. Yeah. I can't remember what yeah. it was exactly. Sure. I think I got it on like Amazon before I boycotted them. Right. Still have not used Amazon. I haven't at used all. Amazon either. Fuck I'm actually kind of surprised with myself. I have not ordered anything from Amazon. I Good for you. Anything. Fuck you, yeah. Bezos. Yeah. Fix his fucking play box. Yeah. My play box is still broken, so still. go fuck yourself, Bezos. It's almost Christmas for fuck's sake. I know. What am I supposed to do now? <sighs> Sounds anyway. like someone's being a Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never had a Fuji Gi. I've had the Elite Gi. I've had like a couple like sure. off-brand ones, and then I don't even know the one I wear. I wear I wear it every single day, Jeff. I couldn't tell you the fucking company. I don't know what I wear. Oh, weird. You know what I'm talking about? No. The gray one I have. Yeah. Is isn't it a Globetrotters? Game? Oh, that one. That yeah. one was my favorite. But yeah. that one is it was a lightweight travel gi from uh, sure. uh, yeah. BJJ Globetrotters. Yeah. That yeah. one was awesome. And I think that's why I like the Elite Pants so much, because they were very similar to those. Sure, sure. Very yeah. lightweight and very durable. 
I've, but, I've know. had so many geese that are like that are just either you know that like I said I I've had geese that fit really well but like the pants tore too easily right. or like and so like durability like the 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 whole combination it for me has been Fuji because everything lasts a long time. But both of them together. were more, most consistent. Like you couldn't really yeah they fault always either one right they fit correctly yeah. like they don't you know so you I'm can order check the size that out. yeah so yeah. I mean they're affordable so because if you go through geese a lot like I do then like you've got you know. These are good everyday training geese. You can wear them at competition. They're IBJJF legal, like, yeah. you know, so on and so forth. Um, so at any rate, so that would be like my. Yeah. I mean, my right. But there's lots of gi brands that I do really like. I like I love my Vulcan. I used to rock Keiko uh, Keiko's all, all the time. I used to wear them. They're very heavy, though. Um, I still have my Howard Combat Kimono is my very first gi ever. I still have it. Really? It's it's in tatters but like it's yeah you know i still have that one i used to love um oh man i used to i used to rock coral geese they were like i love those i don't think i even knew that there were this many brands of geese oh my gosh there's so many of them. i swear to god i, I i've I, seen some really good ones lately from like I, 97 i like from, the hayabusa yeah hayabusa. and it's fun to say yeah and there's uh uh justin is the one asked for geese. he buys geese like he, he and chris that guy geese. but chris buys um uh, what the hell is he? He's he's always show your role. So he yeah. buys, he that's what he buys. He's got they, he he's always got the cool little cartoon characters on his yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. They he also really buys cool. he also buys uh, bull terrier geese too. So. Oh, is that? I, I thought that was the same. I thought that was the same brand. No, no. Oh wow. But uh, uh, yeah, Justin. I gotta say, honorable mention. Uh, 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 gee, fucking what is it? Gee the style, I guess. Yeah. Number one, I feel like is Justin. I, 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 every day I see him. He always looks him, sharp. He's I say, always like, "Damn, that's a nice gear." Is that <laughs> like, and I go, "Like, is that new?" Like, so he must buy it. Like, he off. buys. Like, yeah, he goes. Like, he's like, he buy. I think. And don't quote me on this, but I think he gets them at BJJ Warehouse. We should ask him. Com. Holiday gift yeah, giving he's, ideas. He's like, yeah, they've always got sales. If there's a sale, like he he's knew like, about I the graps too, or whatever those graps. The, what, it, do you remember? He was talking about the. It was <laughs> we could you like. It's a little glove that you put over your hand, and it keeps your fingers together instead of using tape. Listen, I'm not a big fan of graps. Me neither, but I, I, he knew all about it, and mm-hmm. he was like, yeah, oh, yeah, have you checked them out? Like, he doesn't have them. Yeah. <laughs> he just knew about them. Yeah. But like, No, no, he doesn't wear graps. No, no. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I do not want to be on Justin's bad side. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be on his good side, yeah. like his gi taste. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, gis are always a good one. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's. Um, I think there's there's probably a variety of things. Rash guards are a big one. Shorts oh, yeah. of your rash guards are important because a lot of people wear rash guards underneath their gi. So even if they're not no gi players, that, that they come in handy. Tape like stuff like that. Tape is like the socks of uh, you, the present tape. of of like uh, like that's a good stock. Yeah, stuffer. it is a good stocking stuffer. Get it like rolls of of athletic tape. It's yeah. it, we use it for a variety of things. Yeah, so. stuff like that. What? Yeah, water bottles. Uh, I for gum or mouth guard. Something put in your mouth right before you go to roll because you're going to do something hey yeah breath mints gum yeah, you man. know things of that na- Again, nature 6 a.m even I, I mean, win 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 yeah <laughs> any kind of something that they can put in their mouth because they're going to be going <sighs> over you and you you know sometimes yeah. it's a it's it's a lot yeah uh, <laughs> uh travel bags like uh yeah. any ways to like carry your shit yeah is a, a good win a gee, yeah. okay so this is a, this is uh actually i can take this tip to the next level and tell you like if you go uh to a sporting store like a What's the, what's the X fucking thing? I can't think of the Under what? Armour, the oh, Under, Under Armour like yeah. store or something like that, or Nike store or any of those like kind of athletic stores. Foot Locker a lot of times, um, any of those like they have those bags, those drawstring bags, yeah. nylon bags. Those are very affordable. They're like twenty bucks. Those things are fucking durable as hell, and they fit perfectly. Everything you need for a jujitsu class, right? You can fit uh, a, a, a extra pair of clothes in there. Your gi, a towel, and you crunch it all in there. You can fit any kind of like band aids or tape that you need to your accessories or shit. And they're suit. They last many many washes. That is like yeah. It's you don't a win. have to get the the giant super fancy one. Or no no like no that. no. Go cheap because you're gonna throw something shitty and Couple smelly us, in there at the end of class anyway. I, me and I. There was one other person. I can't remember who it was that uh, we like. We just talked about it too. But there was uh, somebody that was telling me that they have the same bag that I have. Yeah. Of the like I got and I got it at like Cabela's. You go sure. to out like just a nice durable I highly suggest either one of those drawstring ones yeah. or like a yeah. a hiking something. Yeah. Something durable. Yep, something durable. Put them in there. Uh toenail clippers. Oh man. 
Get yeah. some toenail clippers for your for your guy or, or gal. Or that, a, a that Manny trains. Petties for some of these students. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always a win. Yeah, yeah. Um, just little things like that are kind of a big deal for for jujitsu practitioners. Compression shorts are a big win. Yeah, cups. Uh, I mean, if you want to get that person, yeah, that's I don't kind wear of a, a cup, much. but yeah, you don't want to buy someone else's cup. But yeah, yeah <laughs> be that's like, weird. Oh, I got. I put the receipt in there in case it's too small. Because it's always going to be too small. What? This isn't an extra large. What? Oh. <laughs> I can't fit my cock in there. Hey. 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 It's because it's so big. Hey. It's so giant. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the extra small. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, there's lots of things that you can, that, that I think that'll work out really good. But here's a good one for you uh, holiday gift guide people who are looking maybe if you're a listener that's got somebody that you love that does jujitsu or you got somebody else in your life that you love that does jujitsu private lessons yeah are a great gift oh, yeah yeah to to get for your your uh, jujitsu practitioner there you know there has been there's a, there's a like a level of in, like attention that you get and that special like i, I don't know if it's the same thing with competitions it's sure. what, it's it's different than just regular rolling because there's other people there, and there's yeah. people watching. Yeah. Even when you're in class and you feel like maybe people are watching, or maybe I, feel, maybe I look stupid, or this, you know, I don't know this person, or whatever. With a private, you know that you're not going to be judged. Yeah. You know that you you not that you like not we're sitting there laughing at you, but you have that privacy. Like you literally, do. it is a private, and and the you know the funny part about the the private is like I'm, that's one of like one of my new you know speaking of New Year's resolutions is uh -huh. skill sets and like how to teach. Because and as a black belt, like, you know, getting asked to do more privates than I've ever done in my entire life. And so learning how to teach a private is very because you can't you don't want to teach the same shit that you teach in class. Yeah, that's not the idea of a private. The private is they're coming to you because they like your game and they want to know more about how you execute your moves. Right. That's the stuff that you save for private lessons and classes. I'm teaching general technique like okay. that's more yeah. adaptable to everybody's body type. But I don't want I don't want a whole classroom full of, of Jeff's. I want like, yeah, you're you know, teaching, I want to give you you're almost teaching it how you were taught. Yeah, yeah. So I thing. give you information. I give you information, and from the general class perspective, I give you information to try and take that and make it your own. Yeah. But from a private perspective, now I'm giving you why I do my specific game like this. This right. is why I do this. This this is how I solve that problem. So if you have a if you have an instructor that you really like or that you know that your the your jujitsu uh, loved one really likes, get a private. Might uh, I suggest Jeff? Me. I mean, honestly, if personally, I don't know if I'm. I may be partial. Could be partial, but I feel like you might be biased. You teach some of the best jujitsu. Well, thanks, man. And you have the best privates. And I will. I have the best privates. I will. I will. I will share. I my did not privates. mean that as a as a double entendre. Listen, everybody, I'll share my privates with you. You're welcome. Yeah. You know, happy holidays. But uh, honestly, I I feel like if anybody uh, like you, you're somebody that's willing. That's not just doing it for the like for the money kind of thing like you said you no. want you're you're somebody that's putting this kind of consideration into it that's why i suggest you not only learning from you like uh, do like i know that you yeah. teach and you're willing to change from that impersonal style of teaching a group where you're like hey everybody here's how we do it right to say like hey blank sure let sure. Me, so how do we? Yeah. How do we solve this puzzle for you? How your jujitsu is? Where right. you are? It goes are beyond just showing your preference and grips. It right. shows how you prefer to get to this position. And exactly. How you you, you right. can control it. Right. So, and how you, as a specific practitioner, can adapt to that environment and take those tips and use them for your game yeah. because that you are you. Yeah. So versus like the class. If you're if uh, a, a black belt who has been studying for over the ten year mark or, or anything like that. You're you're getting a well a way more defined uh, version of that ten years of knowledge, yeah, ten yeah, years yeah. plus of yeah. knowledge. You're cause... you're paying me to like m skip some of the mistakes that I made already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like oh yeah. shit, I, I forgot this part. In class. Yeah, There's it's, this part. it's exactly because <laughs> you're being watched. You're literally being watched by everybody. Yeah, exactly. So you have that kind of thing of like, yeah, just get here and then put your arm here. And then here, and and you're, you're like, just like, oh, oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Oh yeah, but that's what the you know. Yeah. So I, 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 yeah, that's awesome. I would highly suggest that as well. And that's year round. That's something that sure. That's year round, right? That's if yeah. you started jujitsu before you quit. Look, I cannot <laughs> get a like, couple privates. Yeah, I was lucky enough to have a lot of access and private lessons with my professor 
and uh, and a couple of other uh, guys that were really good that I that I respect and, and love to this day. And taking that taking that time, that specific time for yourself to focus on what you want from jujitsu and what your professor can give you can can catapult your jujitsu exponentially. Yeah. So I mean, I highly recommend it. Even if it's not me, if it's somebody else, like right. you take that time to go do that. It, it's it's really important. Even if you're getting like one or two a month. It's totally worth it. Yeah. So um, anyway, so yeah, so that's that. We talk about what's popping, what's cracking, what's happening oh. in the world of jujitsu today. Today, jujitsu today. Well, we did have uh, we did have uh, worlds. Yes. Yeah. Here, not that long ago. We have all the results. Did you watch any of the matches? I did not. Oh, you haven't seen any? I have not seen any of them yet. Yeah. No spoilers. Okay, well, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I have to no. spoil yeah, at least yeah, one of them. Okay, so first of all, like I, I won't get into I won't get into all the matches for Worlds. I mean, there, if you guys uh, another another plug for a place to go for all of like your like the best matches watched, get a subscription. This is a great holiday gift idea. Oh, here we go. Get your loved one or yourself a subscription to Flow Grappling. I have yet to do this. Actually, Muskin was just suggesting it's that. Super... Actually, I think he offered me his login, but, you know, get... What is it? I'll, I'll, do it out later. <laughs> I'll have it on the bottom okay, of the we'll screen. Have it, we'll have it in the <laughs> description below. Um, yeah, get a subscription to Flow Grappling. It's really like you can, you know, there's lots and lots and lots of opportunities to watch some great matches from Flow Grappling. Um, they do all the work for you, so everything is really well organized. It's high, I highly recommend it. But Worlds just happened. Some great matches. You guys won't be surprised to find out that the majority of like the victories that took place in here were just a mastery of the fundamentals. You saw a lot of like uh, bow and arrow chokes, triangle chokes, straight arm locks, like you know, like this just normal stuff that we take for granted every day. Yeah, and it happened on a you know at the highest level of jujitsu. Um, so some of the, but what who was the who was the guy that you were Tommy Linegacker? Yeah, do you know who he fought? And the final, or no, it wasn't finals. I think it was. I think it was. I think I might. Did did he? Did it he was lose? Dalpra. It was. Yeah. It was. Did he it, lose? It was my guy. I watched that. Yeah. Did you I watch did it? watch that match. Yeah. 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 He lost. I was like, damn. But he had his back at one point. Yeah. That was a good. That was a good match. I did it was watch a that great one. Match. Yeah. That was yep. on YouTube. Yeah. But Tannen came out with the victory. He ended up winning his division for that. Yeah. yeah. So he won. Yeah. He won it all. Yep. He yeah, did. But he yeah. Did win it all. Uh, yeah. I remember. So yeah. And I remember watching that match and going again. It it's a, it's. Like you said, just all of the things that you've been teaching, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. like it's grips, it's it's position, it's it's it, it's, I I that was a that was a match that was pretty quick too, right? Wasn't it like ten like uh, under ten minutes? It was under ten minutes. Yeah. yeah, it was like it was like at the eight minute mark or something like that, seven or eight minutes. Yeah. But it 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 happened. It's so fast. It's so smooth. It, it was, was and it's constant, 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 it constant. Precise. Yeah. It's like yeah. precise. Yeah, it's very precise. Yeah, he had and he had he, to his credit, he had a great guard retention. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, uh, you know uh, it was competitive. It was competitive, sure. and and Dalpa really like had to work his guard passing to get to so that. So that's that your point. guy. So I, oh, yeah. I oh, yeah. inadvertently watched your guy without even because a lot of times I'm just like oh that oh it's him cool he's, it yeah, just shows up in my home screen and I go yeah sure I'll watch that and he's I'm just, just like, a, he's just a kid I've been watching this year they're really impressed with his work and we, we brought yeah. it up on the podcast that's so cool that our said, guys went yeah, at it that's so fucking it. cool yeah, yeah they're in the same weight class and, oh uh, shit yeah they both made it uh, up to I don't know I it might have been a semi-final a finals match I'm not I'm not positive but they were both in the same bracket so they did fight and it was a good it was a good fight it was it was awesome yeah yeah uh, speaking of good fights in the world of jiu-jitsu today I got to see a couple of our uh, our our your students and my co-students co-students <laughs> <laughs> Training partners, <laughs> yeah. <that's it. laughs> uh, some of the crew uh, competing in the uh, good fight. Actually, well, let me specify. I showed up to watch them compete at the good fight. I know, I know, and and it was delayed quite a bit. Yeah, but, uh, I heard we had some problems with it. Was, the... But but uh, some successes, yeah. some some learning experiences, and and some more fucking competition heartbreak for goddamn rick yeah i feel I, I i feel bad for who he eventually goes up against Look, in competition because he's too. gonna tear their arm off yeah yeah i mean it's gonna be so like and i don't want to i don't want to digress don't have to go too much yeah, i don't want to digress too much but a big shout out to the 6 a.m crew i'm sorry i couldn't be there i fucking covid so I they, wasn't, they understand so I, wasn't allowed <laughs> to be there. I wanted to compete too i was i was scheduled to compete right, right. there and then of course coach and I did, didn't get to do either one of them because, well, I was I had COVID. Um, but the 
everybody did a great job. I did see a lot of the film, you know, uh, from from those that were taken on that. Rick didn't get to compete because it got delayed so got late. Back, yeah. And he had things he had to do that evening. He right. couldn't stay. He right, had right. to leave. Um, and it's disappointing. And I and I appreciate it. But th- this is the way these things go, though. Right. And I didn't want to I didn't want to digress too much. But obviously, I just wanted to say because yeah. you said good fight. And I was thinking, oh, shit, I got to give a shout out. Yeah. Submission Eric, only. David, Rick, everybody that was there. I, we, yeah. we hung out. It was a fun hang. I had a yeah. great time hanging out with them. Sure. Of course. I unfortunately didn't get to see any of them compete. But yeah. Yeah. it was it was one of those things that even stuff like that, I, I would say. In general, not to bring up any any sore feelings or anything like that, but watching the comp- the competing the competition between like the the black belts and even uh, some of the other sure. anything, I just I love going to jujitsu competitions. Yeah, if I'm if I'm doing a New Year's resolution in a, a loose way, I'd like to not even if I don't compete go to more jujitsu competitions. Sure. They're they're great places to like see what's going on. What's it's, like what's I love happening. being in the environment. You know what I mean? It's a cool environment. I would it like is. to go to Worlds one day or one of those ones where they have the the cool ring in the middle and shit like that and <laughs> everybody's watching and shit. Like Of course, yeah. Go I, to any, any IBJJF tournament, you're gonna see that. Or maybe even possibly put one on that looks like that. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? That's sure, a, for sure. Maybe look for that soon. Is that <laughs> I don't know I'm saying. doing it. <laughs> so anyway, so um, a couple of things I do. Uh, I want to say I want to say a shout out to to Kira Gracie mm-hmm. who got uh, inducted into the ADCC Hall of Fame. Yeah, so, yeah. Abu so, Dhabi. Uh, damn it. <laughs> Combat, Combat Club. Club. You <laughs> did it. You I remember. It. I remember. Yeah, yeah, we did this for Andre Gaval right. uh, the last episode. He got inducted. Uh, Kira uh, Gracie got inducted here recently. So that's a big deal. Um, and so shout out to her. She's like, I think she's like a fourth degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Nice. So that's a the, it's kind of a big deal. I was really impressed with that. There was um, there was a couple of other things too that I, I just have to like kind of scroll yeah. through here. Um, are you familiar with what a closeout is? Like a like a like a store, like a, like a sale, like a going, going out of business sale. No, in jujitsu, you knucklehead. No, not at all. <laughs> okay, obviously. So, so, for, <laughs> so uh, uh, the Rotula brothers, who fight out of Atos, and many people will know who they are. They just got their black belts. They're, they're twin brothers that that fight out of Atos. They get them at the same time. They did. Nice. They got their black belts. Um, they did. They fought at Worlds at Brown. Um, and they end up having to fight each other for for first. Wow. Okay. Now Dramatic. this is this is a, and I'll and I'll stop with the the world jujitsu from here. Except for there's one other thing I want to talk about. Yeah, it's fine. Um, is that uh, if you've got uh, if you've got a closeout, what happens is you have two guys or two gals from the same team that have to fight in the finals. And when you close out a division, what usually happens, and it's been going on for years is that they'll make a decision, like the teammates will make a decision who gets first and who gets second, and they don't fight. They just, they choose not to fight at all. Oh, okay. Okay. And you understand that the origins of this was because you know, they didn't want to hurt somebody. They didn't want to create like a, 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 a inner team competition or stress or anxiety right. or, 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 you know, bad blood in those types of environments. And, but the Rotula brothers fought their asses off nice. against each other. And uh, and and I actually my personal opinion on closeouts is I think they're bullshit. Yeah, I would have to agree. I've never heard of that, and I think that's why because I don't I don't really hear bullshit. Yeah, yeah, I don't like <laughs> I don't like the idea. Look, I understand it is not preferable, and, and and especially if you like, for instance, if you go to a competition and the only people in your division are people from your school, that kind of sucks. Yeah, like I I mean that would not be fun, but. Yeah. If, yeah, they probably – they didn't know ahead – they knew it was a possibility that they could meet each other in the finals, but they didn't know. Oh, it was predicted. Oh, it was – but, yeah, but that's – Yeah, it was know, predicted that they were going to make it to the finals. Ideally, and- even, like, best-case scenario, if both of them co- were completing their game plan, they would be meeting each other in the finals. Of course. Like, they were, that was that's exactly the plan. Right. Yeah, right. So right. they were already in the mindset. If you're If you're signing up for a competition and you – happen to just sign up with only people that are in your weight class from your school sure you don't know that ahead of time Correct. well i guess you can you do you can check the you'll find a bracket like that. yeah but but, but you mean, don't know it as as ahead of time as they do like it, as far as like to say we're competing in this phase right we might do this yes you don't think of it and like they're that. dominant champions and they're yeah. at, at you know brown anyway so like they kind of get an idea that it's and it was predicted uh, the whole way through that they were going to have to face each other anyway. But they didn't close it out. They went and fought each other. Right. And, and it was a good match, and they, they fought each other like they always do. But here's the thing. With closeouts, the reason I don't like – I understand why, 
But here's why I don't like them. is because it's just your jujitsu versus your opponent's jujitsu. That's all it is. Yeah. You're not... You just shouldn't be thinking about your opponent at all. You should be thinking about applying your jujitsu as effectively as possible. Yeah, I could see it as being almost like a stalemate, though, because you know how sometimes when you it know someone's be. someone's jujitsu, like if they're it training, could be. if they're getting ready for this competition, they're probably if they're training sure. together, they're rolling with each other the whole time, so they know each other. Sure. Like, Plus, like these the guys are twin means. brothers. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, so I would if. Anybody were ever to have a closeout, Jeff, I would say these guys would be the most eligible because they'd be like, "What are you going to do? You're just going to be two people." Sure, we live together. We're yeah. like we're, we're family, <laughs> like mirroring yeah, each yeah, other, yeah. like mimes or some shit. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, I feel pain when he feels pain. Kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't heel hook him because I'm just heel hooking myself. myself. That's right. <laughs> I'm having sympathy pains. Yeah, over if here. you were going to give someone a pass, it would be those two guys. Yeah, right? if he's but... choking him out, he's. Right. Now they're both going it's out. A stalemate. Who wins? Yeah. <laughs> it's a photo finish. Nobody knows. <laughs> so I, I, I can understand, like, both getting for, like, uh, you know, yeah, I get that or whatever, but I would excuse it the most for the twins just because it would potentially be a very boring competition. Well, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. No. And I, so I'm just saying. Because they're also brothers, guys. Don't yeah, forget that. Yeah. As we live. Oh, me best. <laughs> <laughs> as we leave. I'm sorry, not live. As we leave the uh, what's happening jiu jitsu yeah. topic, I just want to put out to the world jiu jitsu. Let's get rid of closeouts. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. If you got there and you're in the finals, then you have to fight whoever you fight and just make it about your jujitsu. That's it. You don't have to worry about if it's your teammate or your brother or your mom or whoever. Just yeah, just do your jujitsu. Yeah, and, and and I think closeouts would be a lot less likely if there was more money involved. <laughs> Maybe, probably. <laughs> yeah, they're fighting for like a That's competition a good, money. It's a mean? great point, man. It's a great point. Would you just say, no, I don't need $100,000. You can have it. Like, right. No. Right. <laughs> I want $100,000. And if it's your twin brother that you're fighting and you guys train at the same gym, I guarantee you he's going to share that with you anyway. So you're right. good to go. So go <laughs> so fight. What are you doing? Go fight this person. Yeah, go fight him. Right. If it's – especially – I think you should – you should absolutely be more comfortable. It would be a better match with somebody that you train with, possibly. I, it, uh, could it could be. be you know what I yeah, mean? Like it, yeah. It, because of that same thing of like, yeah. of of I'm used to this or whatever, but I, who knows? I don't know. I, I agree with you, though. But I just learned about them, and I totally agree with you. Yeah. I, I never want to hear about them ever again. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of close. I've only heard about them once, and God damn it, I'm already tired of it. So Pat, huh? so Pat, huh? so Pat, yeah. so Pat, what? what's on your turntable? Me? Yeah, man. I've uh, been listening to uh, an album by one of my all-time favorite bands, Every Time I Die. Okay. Uh, this is a band, it's a, I don't know exactly how to categorize, how categorize them except for uh, being uh, rock. Porn, porn rock? Well, it's like, it's more, no, it's more hardcore, <laughs> but not porn. Uh, it's uh, a little bit of metal. <laughs> But not heavy, you know what I'm saying? Okay. It's actually very heavy. It's, <laughs> uh, um, but they're but not heavy metal. Yeah, yeah. yeah but they're it's um, it, they're a band from Buffalo that is, in my opinion, gotten better with every album that they've put out. Um, they always surprise me because I'm always like ready, like here here comes the stinker. Yeah, here comes the. I've been immensely happy with everything they've put out my entire time knowing who they are. And every time they put something out, it's a little bit more uh, fucking brutal. It's a little bit more, nice. It's more artistic. It's it, it, it experimental, but not like they're not they're diving off the edge. But it's like it's I, with such a confidence. A lot of times, sure. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. The like the the risk that they take, I feel like with like they truly trust their fan base. Sure. And it, it's it's like to me, it shows in the way that they put out like their music sure there's an intentionality to it it's like not just cheesy right. it's not like fake there's nothing phony about them there's nothing they're actually going through the reason i brought this up was because uh initially <laughs> i i had that same i went through the same cycle of doubting them again and because they put out a, a single like c before releasing sure album, of course right right that's that was typical like eh, i don't know if i like this that yeah. much, you know what i mean and a buddy of mine <laughs> explained how much he had loved listening to the record. And I was like, oh, shit, I, I completely didn't even listen. To the I record. didn't even right. I wasn't even on my radar because I was like, oh, this is the one I'm our, you know, I, I doubted him again and blah, blah, blah. And it is fucking spectacular. Yeah. And they Great. are. And unfortunately, the band is going through a little bit of turmoil 
within the lead singer, which I had also been expecting for years. Yeah, okay, right. These guys go, they, they tour like crazy. They give everything they possibly can to their fans. They have multiple things, like the, the lead singer is also an author. He actually works for The Hard Times. I've, I've okay. got to interview him in the past. Gotcha. Um, and the guitar uh, one of the lead guitar players is also a professional wrestler for AEW. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the... Uh, the guitar player and brother of the lead singer is also a, a, like an artist. He does all of their artwork and graphic okay. design. He actually did that buffalo over there. Uh, on the oh wall. no shit! Yeah, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, he's he's like it's so it's they. I fucking love this band. Yeah. It breaks my heart that I may never get to see them again live, yeah. and I never got to check out. They do a, a yearly Christmas party called Tid the Season. Uh, mm. uh, every time I die, uh, eat Tid. Yes. That's yes. what it's called. Yeah, yeah. Tid the Season. I love it. They have them. They have, uh, uh, like other bands play. It's like a, a little mini festival that a holiday party that they put on for their fans. Okay. And they have like special merch that you can only get there, and special things that they they do meet and greets, all this other shit. Sure. Didn't couldn't do one for COVID. This may end up being the last one, and it kind of breaks my heart that I don't think I'll get to see it. So, uh. but I at their latest album is Radical. It's called okay. Radical. Yeah. It is if you like heavy music, at all. Yeah. Check them out. Like, I know I say Great that record. a lot, but holy shit, this one gives me fucking goosebumps. Great, it's so fucking. I'll good. check it out, man. I will. Um, what about you, buddy? What's on your turntable? I'm going a little bit more back in time today. Ooh, yeah. I, I it, went brand new. You're going back yeah, in the oldies. Yeah, I like I'm it. going old school. Your oh, new yeah. school. Like I get it, man. It was, a, and it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be Operation Ivy. Oh yeah. So uh, I, it's been on my turntable several times in the last couple of weeks, and I'm like, I can't get rid of the record. Like I'm like, okay. It's the it's the only record they ever released. Is as it a the one length. that has all the full length one? Okay, yeah, yeah it's the full. It's their yeah. only full length. They do have like, they had a um, they did release some seven inches. I actually have I actually have two of them. Oh, wow. um, and then they did uh, they did a live record called CD, um, which is really oh, good. I haven't heard that. Oh, it's really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it was like it's a it's a pretty shitty like live recording. Yeah, and just in general, I mean, it sounds fine. Like you can listen to it and it sounds, but it's it's not like. It's no great. Of shakes. all classic punk bands that I've ever known, I have. I, it has baffled me the most. I don't know their backstory, but it has baffled me the most. All the members are still alive. Mm -hmm. All of them are still performing mm -hmm. on a regular basis. The fact that they haven't done like a reunion tour or some kind of yeah, I don't know what happened to that band. But I it's part I of love the mystique it. of Operation yeah. Ivy. Like you know, how could they be like the like the sort of like the linchpin of like '90s like punk rock? Who wasn't influenced by them? In exactly. Way? Who was? Yeah, everybody's influenced by Operation Ivy, and then they only released one record. weren't around that long, like late '80s, early '90s. I think in '89 they broke up. Like I mean, I don't think they even made it to the '90s. Um, Associated with a lot of like huge bands no effects uh great green day was yeah. like they they played a lot of shows with green day they were close yeah well i mean tim armstrong <laughs> is the lead singer rancid, rancid yeah, yeah. and you know matt, he was matt part freeman as well matt freeman would play yeah. bass in both operation ivy and, and almost rancid. call him max freeman i always <laughs> almost call him max because of maxwell murder but, yeah, no sorry. it's matt yeah. yeah and and but like so they went off to make rancid but like uh you know the Operation. This record, this record, it, it doesn't. You don't even have to be a punker to like this no, record. No, no, it's no. just such a great record. If you have not listened to the song "Sound System," you have not lived. Everybody that loves music can listen to "Sound System" and be like, "This song is about me." It's like it, it, if if I were to compare any song to, and this is I I mean it as a compliment, but it is like a classic song in the same vein of like footloose yeah of like i kind of feel like you can't fucking not like footloose a little bit okay really <laughs> <laughs> i don't like footloose you don't like all. footloose even no, a little bit no it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't like cheer you up no at all really no oh fuck you then yeah <laughs> fuck me you know what don't listen to footloose this is the last episode of six Sam. <laughs> <laughs> no but i you, but you under, I, I understand what you're saying i like, feel like it's like that, a, it's like it's a it's a perfect hype song you it know is, what I mean? It's, it, great. It's, it's a it's a thing where like, yeah, like it. You may not like it, but I feel like you might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> sound system, not Footloose. Listen to Sound System from Operation Ivy first. Yeah, you only have one record for Operation Ivy, so just go find the self titled record and listen to it. It's a great record. Yeah, it, it's yeah. really really conscious. It's a uh, it's you know it's great music and uh, it, it has such an influence on on. 
you know, generations to follow of punk rock and will forever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And a, the, a lot of the root, and, and you want to talk about like roots or techniques, anything like that. Sure. Like, you know, like a lot of, a lot of like fundamental sounds of punk yeah. rock music are in this band, but not in a, not in the a stale way. Like it, that, that record, they, like you said, they only have one release, one full length release. Yeah. Is still not old to me. It's not. You're right. That's. I think that's what impressed me the most. Yeah. I'm like listening to it recently. Doesn't sound old. It doesn't. It sounds like it's like the fuck are these guys. Yeah. You know. You, yeah, obviously, you know who they are. But like, yeah, yeah it, it's something that you could play for somebody now, and like it. Yeah, it's not the. It's. It doesn't sound like the best quality, but it just sounds like very good quality yeah. punk music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's still quality. punk music quality. You know what I mean? Like it still has that quality. Yeah. DIY kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Feel. It's it's pretty raw. Yeah. But it, yeah. it still doesn't sound dated. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. It's timeless. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a timeless record. That's a good one. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So various, go. various ends of the spectrum musically today, but you should definitely check out both of these because yeah. honestly, qu- both like we both ended up with some really quality turntables today i know we always have good ones we usually have pretty good ones but this one like this yeah. one like these i can sign off personally on both of these yeah i i sign off on jeff's as well no, thank you. mine you may, may maybe it's more of an acquired taste but i trust me the quality's there but good it's time for our next segment jeff it's a surprise segment i just invented it oh it's called ask, ask a, a black, black belt, belt. <laughs> <laughs> David. Uh, he asked, do you take supplements for training? Any supplements for training? Scott? So, and I don't know what he meant by this. If he meant like joints <laughs> or if he meant like joints <laughs> slash proteins, etc. Like, do you take any kind of uh, proteins or uh, anything like that? Well, listener David, let's take a look here. What's the ingredients in Old Milwaukee? <laughs> <laughs> Does it have electrolytes? <laughs> I, no, actually, I don't. I, thanks for the question. No, I don't take any additional supplements. Um, Do you have any kind of routine? I try. No, I mean, look, I try to make sure that I'm th- that the the first thing that I think is really important, especially when you're going and doing uh, any type of martial art like this, where your your cardio, where it's not just cardio; it's everything. Your mental and physical being has to be on point and you're in a high stress environment hydration is super important yeah and when when i talk about hydration i'm not just talking about drinking a lot of water at class i'm talking about you drink a lot of water all the time yeah so that you can kind of cut that back so you're just drinking fluids on a regular basis it doesn't have to be water right most beverages the majority of it's made up of water including beer yeah it's true the problem Especially with <laughs> old milwaukee <laughs> yeah <laughs> the problem with <laughs> the problem with beer and coffee and things like that is that they're diuretic so you're going to yeah. pee a lot more yeah, yeah. so you have to drink more fluids so i'm okay with that i just pee a lot more and drink a lot more yeah. so yeah that's but, all yeah but you you want to stay hydrated is is the the first and, and most important thing and then outside of that is making sure that i don't um that i eat when i'm hungry but i don't overeat yeah um i have specific foods that like i know that if i sit down with it i'm going to overeat like i can't help myself like my wife's spaghetti yeah you look I, you said it many i'm i look I, forward to eating yeah it every day. I, I eat I so much what. of it that it's like it's disgusting yeah. so like so i know that like i am completely ineffectual if there's a home invasion after i eat that i'm like just take whatever you want yeah, I don't you're like, shit. My, all my years of training are are yeah. completely That's no right. avoid because of the spaghetti. Uh, spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's over. So like I can't eat that like so but but I can but I can say that like most of the time like it's really important for me to like manage the amount of food I eat. Um like so j- at, at each city I try to eat on a regular basis um and then I just try and I try and make sure that my my wife does a great job making sure my diet's pretty balanced. So I get yeah. greens, I get you know so I get vegetables and fruits and and you know, uh, basically the food pyramid in, in most of my days. So I try not to eat a lot of processed foods and I try not to eat a lot of junk food. Yeah. 
which I just don't fall victim to. I just don't because we just don't have it in the house. Again, that's a, that's another thing with building better habits and yeah. stuff like that. Like just try not to eat shitty foods for like two weeks. Yeah, you're like kind of getting to a good when I say shitty foods, I mean stuff that after you eat it, you're like, oh, I feel like crap. You like, regret it. Like, yeah, you're, you're kind of yeah. like I that wasn't worth it. You exactly. I mean? Don't eat it. Yeah. Stop eating it. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, and so I'm pretty disciplined with that. But I'm also not food motivated. So like, I eat when I eat. Um, I eat because it's most of the time it's because I have to fuel my body. Yeah, yeah. That's it. So anyway, but no, I don't take any additional supplements. Um, good. That's good. Good to know. Yeah. I do. I take a lot. Uh, but I think that's mainly just because I don't. I'm not getting my nutrients from my food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have another question from a listener, uh, Joe. Uh, Joe says uh, <laughs> he asks if you could train for one month with any other black belt or academy, who slash where would it be? Oh, that's a that's an easy. Oh, fuck, no, it's not. Because <laughs> he said who or where. Like, if it was one or the other, it, it would be pretty much easy. Well, no, because it's kind of the same place, right? Yeah, it would be the same place. Uh, but ideally, you're comfortable, most comfortable in our gym, so... Yeah, I mean, but that's... He means, like, if I could, if I had, like, my... If I could go find another yeah, academy yeah. or instructor. And, and damn you, Joe. <laughs> so, it would be... That's a good one. Yeah, I think there's... there's I have two that, I, I, that I'd really like to spend a lot of more time with. Um, and that would be... Matt Thornton out of Straight Blast Gym in Portland, mm-hmm. um, and then the other one would be Marcelo Garcia from uh, uh, Alliance in New York. Nice. Yeah. So, um, I'm just a really like I'm a really big fan of the way that Marcelo teaches, um, and maybe more importantly, like his idea his ideas on how jujitsu works, and he doesn't really like he doesn't separate his students like as individuals like. This will work for you, and this will work for you, and this will work for you. He's like, no, this is the move. Do the fucking move. Yeah, this that's is, it. This is the right way to do it. Yeah, no, and like, no, in the way, no. he, yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah, and the way he teaches it, because he, he's super nice. He doesn't yeah, yeah. talk like that. Well, he's yeah, never. Yeah. He's super, super nice. But like the like the way that he teaches it is he says, you know, his is founded in like reality. So he's like, you're going to go do this thing, and it's going to go bad. So here's what you're going to do to stop that you know yeah. what i mean and i'm like oh i really appreciate that perspective because it's honest yeah, yeah it's very honest right because so teaching moves like to a classroom full of like eager students it's really easy to get caught up in like youtube shit that you saw that looked really cool and you yeah. want to teach it to everybody but it doesn't work because all that person has to do is posture i can or... tell you i I've, I've asked you before i've asked you i've showed you a thing that i said i was like what about this and you're like yeah but just yeah, but here's work. what's gonna happen it looks as soon as this happens this happens right right like, and it's and a like, great oh. yeah and it's cool like <laughs> yeah. it's not to say that it, it couldn't work delete yeah but, <laughs> but right right don't make it your a game so i would say i would say if i had to choose joe i would probably pick marcelo uh if i just if i could spend a month in his academy with him and train with him i would pick it but matt thornton's up there too i really like matt thornton from the straight yeah. blast gym in portland um well sbg is like international but um but there's his main headquarters is in Portland, so I like I like there's a there's definitely a couple like nearby like ones that I've actually looked up and I think I actually plan on hopefully one day going and taking class with Ryan Halls in Virginia. Yeah, great. He's not that far. Yeah. And uh, Matt Sarah is out in Long Island. Yep, I'd yep. like to go. Yep, both quality. both of them love. There's that word they, quality again. They fucking love jujitsu and they're fucking specialists. Yeah, yeah, they are awesome. So yeah, I couldn't I couldn't disagree yeah, more. Yeah, that'd be great. But or yeah, agree more. Wait, I don't disagree. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I couldn't agree disagree more. less. I couldn't disagree <laughs> less. Fuck. Well, either way, Stanley, you know what? You've been a good kitty cat for the first time in your entire life. Yeah, that was pretty Just good. Now. I'm in, impressed. All right, and then yeah, now you're really showing your ass, <laughs> showing them the best side. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys after the holidays. Don't Bye. don't do anything stupid. Bye.